Today is about deterrence and America's commitment to stability and security in Europe. It is also about a friendship and alliance between two great nations, Germany and the United States, what President George Herbert Walker Bush called partners in leadership on 3 October 1990. Last July at the NATO summit in Warsaw, our great alliance, NATO, the most successful alliance in history, decided that we must transition from assurance to deterrence. All 28 nations, including Germany and the United States of America, agreed that the new security environment in Europe required this transition. Deterrence means having the capability to compel, demonstrating that capability, and demonstrating the will to use that capability. That is the best way to prevent conflict. Transparency ensures no misunderstanding and no miscalculation. U.S. Army aviation is an essential part of our deterrent capability and the commitment of the United States to send rotational aviation units to Europe is a sign of our will. We could have a thousand tanks lined up outside, but any potential adversary would look there and if he did not see aviation, he would know that we were not serious. When he sees U.S. Army aviation, he knows that we are serious. Let me speak now briefly, directly to our German hosts, our German ally, our German friend. I come from Florida, so this may not sound exactly like it should. Here in Bayern, sind Sie unsere Gastgeber. Wir werden niemals vergessen, dass wir Gäste in ihren Städten, in ihren Bezirken, in ihrem Freistaat und in Deutschland sind. Ohne ihr Wohlwollen sowie ihr Empfang und ohne ihr Vertrauen wäre es uns nicht möglich, hier zu sein. Wir sind sehr dankbar für Ihre Gastfreundschaft. Wir sind auch fest entschlossen, Ihnen gute Nachbarn zu sein. Ich kann nicht versprechen, dass durch unsere Helikopter kein Lärm entstehen wird, weil dieser definitiv entstehen wird. Ich kann nicht versprechen, dass es kein erhöhtes Verkehrsaufkommen geben wird, weil auch dies der Fall, der Fall sein wird. Was ich aber versprechen kann, ist, dass wir uns an die Regeln und Gesetze im Hinblick auf den Flugbetrieb halten werden. Wir werden Sie immer informieren, konsultieren und auf Sie hören. Unsere Absicht heute und jeden weiteren Tag ist es, ihr Vertrauen zu verdienen und zu behalten. And finally, let me speak directly to our U.S. Army aviators. Task Force Apocalypse, 3rd Battalion, 501st Aviation. Well done. You've been a vital part of making our 30,000 soldiers look and feel like 300,000 soldiers. You're definitely a learning organization, the hallmark of a great organization. To 10th Combat Aviation Brigade, welcome to you. Your deployment from Fort Drum into Europe through three airports and three seaports was a powerful signal of the United States Army's agility as well as its capability. And you've helped the European theater and the United States Army learn. 12th Combat Aviation Brigade, you are the epitome of what the U.S. Army is all about. Professionalism, unselfish, adaptive, and focused on the mission. The way that you transformed yourself to enable rapid deployment and integration of rotational aviation is going to enable us to achieve, achieve strategic effect. This was a team effort in 12th Cab, but your commander, Colonel Muddy Waters, has been the visionary, the leader, 
and the force behind this transformation. Well done, buddy. And finally, now I have the honor to introduce my friend, a true partner in leadership, Minister Hoover, head of the Bavarian State Chancellor, sir. General Hodges, General von Heimendahl, General Guto, General Donayu, General Klein, Colonel Lott, Colonel Waters, dear soldiers, Deputy Landrat Horndasch, Madam Keller, Mayor Seidel, Mayor Forster, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to extend a heartful Grüß Gott zusammen, as we say here, to all of you. As Minister responsible for military affairs and rep representative of Bavaria, I am uh, delighted to attend uh, this ceremony. It is a pleasure for me to convey best wishes uh, from our uh, Bavarian Minister President Horst Seehofer and uh, the greetings of the entire Bavarian government. <coughs> Dear Lieutenant Colonel Ari Ariega, Today, your battalion is leaving the ansbach katerberg base to return home to Texas. As re re represent representative of the Bavarian state government, it's my privilege to express my gratitude and respect uh, to all of you for your service. Colonel Gill, dear soldiers, welcome to Bavaria. As from today, you will be stationed with the 10th Combat Aviation Brigade at the headquarters in Illesheim. The state of Bavaria is proud to offer this rotational unit a second home for a while. Soldiers of the US Army are always sincerely welcome here with us in Bavaria. And you will soon know what it means, as we said uh, last year as the G7 summit, um, welcome the home, welcome at home. We know that in the United States of America have been our uh, most, lo most loyal ally for over 60 years. To this day, American soldiers have been uh, guarantors of peace and security in our country and in all of Europe. This new rotational unit assumes international responsibility. In the Baltics, you are supporting NATO operations in Eastern Europe. I wish to thank the 12th Combat Aviation Brigade for their service in Afghanistan. You met where helicopters provide vital reassurance uh, also to our soldiers. We know that we can always rely on you. Ladies and gentlemen, in my capacity as State Minister, I engage in many discussions, also those relating to aircraft noise issues. I'm confident that we uh, all are keen to find a balance between the concerns of the population and the operational requirements of the base. But let me also add, in these uncertain times, we will all have to pay a price for security and for peace. And this price is going to increase for all citizens in Bavaria and also in Germany. The security conference held just a, a few weeks ago in Munich revealed new global threats. We in Bavaria, let me emphasize this, we in Bavaria acknowledge all the more your friendship, our friendship with the US, USA as a, con, a cornerstone of German foreign and security policy. Dear service members, I assure you, you can count on the support of the Bavarian state government, you can rely on the support of the people of Bavaria. I wish the 3rd Battalion a safe journey home and the 10th Combat Aviation Brigade a good start here with us in Bavaria. I wish you all courage, vigor and confidence in our duties, in your duties and always a safe, safe return from all of your missions. Thank you. My daughter Savannah and son CJ say, when are we going to be home? Uh, and they mean Ansbach. And they consider it home. 
And it is just a, it is a, just a great thrill. And uh, I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to bring my family here and live in Ansbach. To uh, Carl Ben Jones and uh, John Staten here locally and the Garrison team, uh, we couldn't have done it without you. Your continued support, you got a great, great team, great outfit. So thank you for that. September 3rd, 2014, in uh, Tallinn, Estonia. Then U.S. President Obama, uh, with Prime Minister Roy Voss, stated, "An attack on one is an attack on all." And in the backdrop. Of, of that speech was uh, two AH-64s and a UH-60 from the 12th Cab. Um, the, the security situation here in Europe changed and 12th Cab changed. And we had helicopters in the, from the Baltics to the Black Sea uh, from 12th Cab. And then we received 4-3 aviation from the 3rd Infantry Division, 3227 assault helicopter battalion from the 1st Cavalry Division, Division, and 351. Uh, task Force Apocalypse from, from Fort Bliss, and indicative of U.S. Army aviation at the time here in Army Europe, uh, we hosted in the summer of 16 Operation Anaconda, and 12th Cav could not have executed Anaconda without uh, round out soldiers in our headquarters and maintenance and support, and certainly Chaos Company, Charlie Company from uh, TF Apocalypse to make Operation Anaconda successful. And then uh, Task Force Apocalypse arrived at large. I'm going to take a minute and detail Apocalypse accomplishments. Uh, 443 soldiers on the ground, sir. If I can do my math right, that's making 443 look like 4,400. So uh, they're pulling their weight. 30 UH 60 assault helicopters and six HH medevac helicopters um, on the ground in four locations, steady state, 24 major exercises in 13 countries, dynamic presence. Uh, and including a long uh, opening up an airhead along NATO's critical southern border with Syria. Three 7th Army Training Command JMRC rotations, 60, almost 6,300 flight hours, uh, 1,600 over their prescribed flying hour program, enabling the Alliance not only building readiness with their, within their own task force, but building readiness, uh, creating assurance, and building deterrence with 17 different NATO and partner countries. At one point, operating simultaneously in seven different locations. Uh, that's dynamic. Uh, that's dynamic presence along a distributed front. Throughout maintaining a uh, operational readiness rate with their with their horses that they ride into battle, their helicopters of 87 percent, and executing. From an organic standpoint, their first major phase maintenance uh, inspection and in, under the Army standard of just 22 days. Finally, I would highlight uh, what rotational aviation is all about. Allied Spirit 5 exercise supporting the Latvian Iron Wolf Brigade at Hohenfeldt's. Colonel Ariaga and the Apocalypse team led uh, both Czech and Belgian forces and eight attack helicopters and eight assault helicopters and MI-17s and Augusta 109s providing uh, flawless aviation support but also building NATO interoper interoperability and cataloging lessons learned for how we're going to fight if we have to. Uh, just a tremendous job and my hat's off to you. True assurance, true deterrence, and everything that I just detailed without a single accident or incident. So you're going to take your horses and your soldiers back home uh, safely. And my hat's off to you for that. Finally, I will comment that this uh, transfer of authority from 12th Cab to 10th Cab in, uh, in Operation Atlantic Resolve, and the, as TF Apocalypse pre uh, prepares to deploy forces back to Forces Command, they do so better trained than, than when they arrived in the summer of 16. And we've had here in 12th Cav, OPCON, Army Aviation Warriors from Old Ironsides, the first team, and uh, the Martin Division spread across uh, and blazed the trail and spread across the continent and uh, have set the, set the pathway for 10th Cab. And we're grateful for their contributions. 
Uh, it is uh, bittersweet to give up a responsibility for Atlantic Resolve, but I couldn't uh, be any more proud to give it up to my good friend and colleague, Claire Gill. Um, tickle pink that you're here. Uh, and most importantly, it's a watershed moment for Army Europe and NATO that we're bringing helicopters back to Europe and uh, equally importantly, soldiers back into Ellisheim, into this great community, Ellisheim and Bad Bedside. So with that, I say wings of victory, flight of glory, strong Europe. Thank you. Well, it is fantastic to be in Deutschland. Good afternoon, our many distinguished guests and friends, and on behalf of all the soldiers of Task Force Falcon, thank you for such a warm welcome to Middle Franconia and the great state of Bavaria. This deployment has already been a fantastic training experience and throughout the course of this year, as we support Atlantic Resolve, we look forward to exercising the capabilities that a regionally allocated Army Aviation Brigade Task Force brings to the Strong Europe team. It's been great to fall in behind the professionals of Task Force Apocalypse who have set conditions for continued success. And I want to personally thank the world-class 12th Combat Aviation Brigade, led by my good friend Muddy Waters, for their selfless effort to ensure Task Force Falcon was resourced, trained, and ready for this important mission that we now assume. Finally, thank you to our German hosts who graciously share this wonderful town of Idesheim with us, our new home away from home. To our German part neighbors and partners, Grüß Gott und vielen Dank, dass Sie heute an dieser Zeremonie als unsere, unsere Gäste teilgenommen haben. Ab heute übernimmt Task Force Falcon den Auftrag Operation Atlantic Resolve. Es ist für ein Ehre, Ihre neuen Nachbarn zu sein. Und wir freuen uns, Freunde fürs Leben zu finden. Nach der Zeremonie lade ich Sie herzlich zu einem kleinen Empfang ein, damit Sie unsere Soldaten kennenlernen. Im Namen meiner Soldaten wünsche ich Ihnen einen schönen Abend. Danke für Ihr Kommen. Fly to glory, strong Europe. It's needed to help ensure stability, security in Europe. The transparency with which the United States Army uh, and our ally Germany, uh, the transparency with which we do things helps reduce misunderstandings, reduces the chance of any kind of miscalculation, uh, but we are serious about our responsibility to provide capability, deterrence here in Europe. And Army Aviation is essential to having that sort of deterrent capability. That's number one. And the second thing, uh, this would not be possible without the support of our ally, our friend, our host, Germany, particularly here in uh, the free state of Bavaria, uh, a community, a group of communities that have uh, great uh, men and women who not only help us here with, in terms of labor, but also allowing us to, to live here, to fly here, uh, to prepare uh, for our mission. Uh, and so we have a responsibility, a commitment to uh, the local communities that we will always be transparent, that we will comply with all regulations, agreements, policies governing how we should fly to show respect for the people that live here. Of course there's going to be noise, of course there's going to be traffic, but I think that under the leadership of Colonel Gill, just like uh, we've done with Colonel Waters, uh, we can find that balance to a way that helps us do our mission, but also uh, shows respect for our German allies. Aviation, you're not capable. We could have a thousand tanks here, but without Army Aviation, we do not present the credible force necessary for deterrence. Um, so the fact that the United States Army is paying, is spending the amount of money required to bring an entire aviation brigade back to Europe with all of its equipment at the highest level of readiness to do this for nine months and then to bring another one behind it, that shows commitment, uh, that demonstrates will, and that gives us the capability to provide deterrence. And having a strong, capable force 
and being very clear and transparent about it is the best way to make sure that we never have to fight. We'll test some of our systems, we'll test some of our logistics trains, uh, but it's going to be a great opportunity. We're looking forward to it. Uh, there must be a balance uh, for the uh, population here uh, in between uh, the problems they have to deal with. On the other hand side, uh, the opportunities they have to work here and also to, to get the security of the American forces. So we try to, to make uh, this balance uh, for everybody evident. So we try to make transparency for everybody. So we have uh, this uh, uh, commission, uh, noise protection commission, to uh, make people clear what will happen here, uh, how many new machines come in and how many get out so they can uh, deal with the situation optimally. 44 total helicopters between 12th cab and 10th cab. Okay. Uh, Colonel Gill and 10th cab brought approximately 80, of which 55 of those are going to be in LSIM currently. Uh, the other 25 or so are spread out uh, across NATO footprint from the from the Baltics to the Black Sea and episodically, uh, as the previous uh, question uh, annotated, we will train or 10th Cab will train uh, in multiple locations. So those numbers will, will ebb and flow over the course of the nine month rotation. Uh, over the last 70 years, uh, the commitment that both nations have made, uh, the fact that uh, Germany uh, has hosted hundreds of thousands of American soldiers over the decades. Families, there's so many connections, uh, not just unit associations, but family connections, friendships. Uh, that's, that's what helps, that sort of a deep relationship is what helps us get through irritants like helicopter noise or, or traffic. Um, I am so proud of how the United States Army has worked hard, particularly in Bavaria, not just with helicopter noise, but if you think about uh, the environment, the work that we do in Grafenwehr and uh, Hohenfels, the, the wildlife there, the, the, the forests there are as well or better protected than anywhere else in Germany because we made a commitment to our host to be good stewards. Uh, and in fact, uh, we even had the French Ministry of Defense came to Hohenfels to understand how are we doing such a good job protecting our share of the environment. That same attitude uh, is how we are going to figure out to find the balance that Minister Hoover talked about between flying, being ready, being safe, but also uh, being respectful of the local uh, communities here. Uh, and look, if you went to Fort Campbell, Kentucky, or Fort Bragg, North Carolina, everybody that lives near those bases has this exact same complaint. It's, a, it's part of it changed with Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, and so the alliance has had to adjust to the new environment. Everybody, you know, Germany is increasing its defense spending. Uh, all the, all the uh, parts of the alliance are having to address this new environment. So, uh, there are no plans to grow, to, uh, to have to get a new base or to expand in Germany yet. Uh, but I think it's prudent for us to identify if we had to, where would that go? Uh, and so, of course, you know, we look at um, available uh, bases in other parts of Germany. Uh, but at this time, there is no plan to bring over, uh, to have to, to have to grow. Clearly, we would need a place where you can do maintenance, where you can train, uh, where you've got uh, barracks and headquarters space and, and, and that sort of thing. Thanks, sir.